I joined Little League and I was on the team for two years or something, three years. And then it was time to move to the majors. So I go to the majors and I played for half a year and they put me back into farm. Oh no. No one ever gets put back. I was so humiliated. But here's the thing, I didn't quit. Why? I just don't, I wanna see it through. And you know, it's been 35 years in my career I don't quit. I'm not quitting. It doesn't all go well in the beginning, you know? In business, it's no different. But you gotta keep going. To describe him would be ready, fire, aim. We're not sighting in a target and sighting in the target and then firing. We're firing and then we're adjusting, and then we're firing and adjusting. Larry's really good at sharing his vision, our visions, okay, at this point. But I recall that first day, he says, you know, every guy out there that has a ladder on his truck, we can help him. You don't start out, you know, with three people working out of 3,000 square foot building and think, oh, we're gonna be a multi-million dollar company 25 years later with 300 employees serving 300 specialty contractors in North America in 100,000 homes a year, changing people's lives and their homes and all those things. You don't think about that. When you make progress and you have success and you learn and you adapt, and you work hard, this is where you end up. Doesn't happen overnight. There's no overnight success here. When I grew up, we were on the second floor of a three-family house. I had two brothers and a much younger sister, and my mom and my stepfather. And there were two bedrooms for all of us. So the dining room became the living room, and the, the living room became the bedroom for my parents. And uh, there were three boys in, in one room and uh, one bathroom and no shower. Uh, we had um, a roll rim tub you know, with the feet on it. The coffee can was always there on the rim of the tub, leaning against the wall, and you'd scoop the water and, you know, rinse your hair, and, you know, we made it work. My mother worked multiple jobs and worked really hard to keep the family together uh, in every way that she could. By her example, I learned value, you know, of hard work, and you, you, know, you do what you gotta do. You know, whatever your circumstances, you do what you gotta do to make it work. Sadly, my uh, stepfather was an alcoholic and, uh, you know, but I, I loved him, you know, he, um, you know, there's a good guy in there and uh, yet, you know, this disease takes over and screws the whole family up, you know. You had my stepfather and my mom and it was, you know, problem and solution and so at a young age, I decided I was not going to be part of the problem for her. I was going to be the solution. My mother would send me to get some groceries. And I remember going in there and I got my, the things that I needed in my arms. And I hesitated before I went to the register until everyone else was gone. And when it was 
coast was clear, I'd go to the register really quick and hope she would hurry, hurry, you know, because I had food stamps. And I didn't want anybody to see me with the food stamps. So, you know, and that, that moment struck me, you know, uh, that I don't want to live like that. I think it was pretty evident when we were younger that he wasn't happy with the status quo, that he wanted to do more. I remember very clearly, I was in second grade. I got a comic book and in the comic book in the back, there was classifieds and it said, you know, buy this box of burpee seeds and, you know, sell them and make a profit. So <laughs> I sent away, I cut it out, you know, and sent away to wherever it was, Minneapolis or something. And a couple of weeks later, there come this box of burpee seeds. So I went door to door, ringing doorbells or knocking on the door and they would come to the door and I would say, would you like to buy some seeds? And, you know, I did really well, right? So I, I made it around the block and I was out of seeds, you know, so I had to send away for more. I learned that I don't have to wait on other people. You know, you can go out there and hustle and earn money for yourself. When I was 13, I uh, bought a paper route from another paper boy and I was delivering 140 papers a day. And no matter how cold it was, no matter how much snow was on the ground, I'm pushing one shopping cart, pulling another one, you know, and delivering these papers. And, uh, you know, I was making $80 a week. I'm 14 years old. And I was like the richest kid in the neighborhood. <laughs> when I was a senior in high school, I already was doing some carpentry work and I bought a $600 Chevy pickup truck the day I graduated and moved in with my grandfather who lived alone and I had some, some space to put my tools and put extra materials and park my, both my car and my old truck and uh, start my life. My education took another dimension when I discovered audio programs. I would buy these things for 60 bucks for a program for six uh, cassette tapes. I ate it up. I mean, to hear people talk to me about marketing and sales and negotiation and, and, you know, psychology of uh, all kinds of things was wow. And so I would listen to these things full time in my truck. And at the time it was like, oh, that motivational stuff, right? I mean, cause it was weird N no one did this, you know? So when my friends got in my truck, I would stuff the audio program under the seat because they would, you know, comment, oh, you listen to that motivational crap again, you know, and, you know, but, uh, but I knew what I wanted and I, and I knew what was good for me the self-help audios, the Earl Nightingales of the world. And the big difference is with Larry is that he actually implemented what these audios were saying and he put them in practice and made it part of his lifestyle change. The future's unlimited. If you challenge yourself and push yourself, you discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. If you don't program your mind, your mind will be programmed because we live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential. I can control my thoughts, therefore, I can control my destiny. Yes. It's one of the, I think it is the great breakthrough thought. I call it the Grand Canyon thought of life. Is every great thinker in history has come to that conclusion, that amazing thought that you actually become what you think about. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, all that really matters is where you're going. Right. Carpentry, call Larry, no job too small. The guy calls and he says, well, can you build me a house? I said, well, you know, I'm 18 years old. If that's a problem for you, let me know right now. And there was like this long silence while the guy kind of weighed his options because it was the building boom and the real carpenters were busy. So he gets down to me. And he says, oh, okay, well, let's get together, you know? And I looked at the plans and I gave him a price and he hired me and I, with my younger brother who was 14 years old and my friend who was 17 years old, we built this house and it was a big house, a complicated house. And in six weeks we framed, roofed and sided it and put the windows and doors in, put the deck on. And from then on, I, I had all the houses I want to build.
The last house I built had a water problem, a brand new house. It had a wall crack that was leaking and uh, I had to figure out how to fix it so I could sell this house. And that's what led me to the basement waterproofing industry. In 1990, I had developed uh, a few products for basement waterproofing. So I was calling around the country to other basement waterproofing contractors, asking them, would they like to be a dealer for my products? It was me and Larry in a pickup truck. We packed a lot of product in the back of the bed of the truck. We would drive to a city or an area and we would get a yellow page book from that area. And whoever had the biggest ad, we would just call them. Hey, we'd like to meet with you. We have some products. We'd love to show you what we have and what we can do to help you with your business. It was a road show. I was 26 years old. Many times the question would come up, so, so how old are you, you know? And I would tell them. And they're like, okay, well, how old is Larry? And I'd say, oh, well, we're the same age. And the look on their face was like, this is, what did I get myself into? We had this vision of what we wanted to be to these contractors. We wanted to help them build their business. We wanted to be in their business, if you will. You had to prove yourself to these guys. You had to prove that you had something, that you could do something, that you can give them information, knowledge, training, tools, products that would help their business. I remember some of those stops and some of those people that we met on that trip are dealers today. So it's an amazing trip. That house is where it all started. That was where I went to work for him first in that house. Larry lived there, he was single, he had his bedroom, but we used the kitchen, the bathroom, the living room, and the spare bedroom as office space, and we get our leads and run appointments out of there, and that was, that was the whole company. So we had the local business that was a contracting business that we were trying to run and help and grow, and on the national side, we were trying to grow a business from nothing. There were a few years where we had a product in development that we thought was gonna change the world. Every time we would get close, there'd be a little setback. And we'd get close and there'd be a little setback. During the research process, there's several projects that we've had that never came to market because it just wasn't feasible to do it. But there's a solution for everything. We never throw anything out. We never throw any idea away. 63 different prototypes and over 8,000 hours of testing to come up with our result. We needed to move because we were out of space again. We had grown out of the facility that we were in, and this would be our fifth move in 11 years. And, uh, you know, moving is expensive and disruptive. And I said, I am not gonna move again. So I bought the biggest building I could find. It was 80,000 square feet. And in the beginning, the average employee in the office had like, a, you know, 3,000 square feet, you know? <laughs> it was their desk and all this carpet around it. And uh, today we have added on to that building. We built eight more buildings or, or bought uh, eight more buildings. We have a nine building campus and uh, it's been an incredible journey. We're gonna have this world-class system of delivering wow to people. And we get that sometimes now, but I wanna take it to a whole new level. I'm looking forward not only seeing you at the top, but beyond the top, because you've got greatness in you. The mark of greatness is on basement systems. The visible comes from the invisible. Something comes out of nothing. Remember back to the little house. A little house on Clayton Street. I got this. <laughs> well, this building was there. 
it was in that house. It was in the universe, invisible, waiting to be called into reality. It existed in ambition and courage and determination and survived through persistence and bold action. In 2014, that's uh, three and a half years ago, my house burned down to the ground. What else do you want to know? <laughs> you know. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Bye bye. I love you. Well, that's what's left of the house. That was a big day. That was a moment. You're standing there and someone's watching their life just go up in front of you. The most precious thing to Larry in the house, outside of obviously his family, were his journals that he spent 20 some years writing. And he had them in his safe, actually. That's what he thought about them. Needless to say, it was a great day when we opened the safe. And sure enough, inside there was his journals and outside of some water damage and his family's drying out his journals on the kitchen table there at his mother-in-law's house, they were spared from the fire. So that was a good day. I witnessed Larry and his family grow from that experience because they realized that things in that house weren't really that important. It's relationships. It's uh, what they're gonna do the next day. It's their goals and their visions. And the whole family grew from that experience. There's no question. What I know is this, your wealth is in you, right? It, it's inside you, it's, it's what you know. Everything you have on the outside of you is a manifestation of what's going on inside of you. So that's, you know, where we need to focus. And, you know, outside things will come and go. I mean, it's gonna happen. Nobody's getting out alive, you know? You can't take it with you, right? So it's like, what are you gonna do while you're here? And is the world gonna be a better place for you having been here? Larry Janeski's seven qualities of a winner. Number one, believe in yourself. Number two, we become what we think about. Control your thoughts. Number three, have a clear vision of where you're going. Set goals. Number four, be positive. Strive to maintain a positive attitude. Number five, take action now. Have a sense of urgency. Number six, work hard. Be disciplined and have the integrity with yourself and others. And number seven, be nice to people, even people you don't understand. As a, a teacher and, and a trainer, I see people who limit themselves because they don't have high expectations and don't expect much out of themselves for their life, for their future. And that's one of the things I talk about. I think that's the major limiting factor for most people, whether they be in business or not, is their own thoughts about themselves. He understands people. It's not about what was, it's about what could be. It gives you a sense of confidence that he's with you 110%. He's a full-blown visionary. He wants to leave his mark on the world. He wants to leave the world a better place than what he found it. And he wants to make it as good for as many people as he possibly can. He's the kind of guy that builds everybody up around him. If you're in his company, you can't help but get better yourself. 
It is absolutely not about how smart you are. It's not about where you come from. It's not about your family or your college education. I didn't go to college and I'm glad I didn't. I'm really glad I didn't. It's about your own self-image and it's about your ability to focus your attention. There's so many opportunities in this world and what you've got to do is focus in on one of them. And I decided I want to be a contractor and I want to be the best contractor I can be. I want to share what I know. You know, there, there must be another reason why I've learned what I have. It can't be just for my own success and my company and my people. There's got to be a bigger reason. The school of entrepreneurship is to be able to have other people use that machine, use those proven concepts to be able to move their company forward. And people are latching onto it and it's helping hundreds if not thousands of people already. We're in this as a team and Larry loves teams. The more teams, the better, because that means he's helping more people. We're not really in the basement waterproofing business. We're in sales and marketing business and we're in business development and business education business, you know, because we're helping people get leads and make sales and give good customer service, how to train your people on how to manage your operation and how to create systems, how to create efficiency, how to create more productivity in your company. That's what we're good at. We're good at helping contracting businesses grow. That's what we do. I wouldn't say this is the destination, but still on the journey, there's still more to come. I couldn't have a bigger impact in the world doing anything else. This is what I need to be doing. And uh, it happens to fit with what my talents are and, and what I wanna do. And it's, it's having fun. <laughs>